even though we are speaking English, then it can be as easy as yes versus no that can create a lot of confusion and misunderstanding. Okay, especially for countries and cultures that are very indirect in their communication styles, very high context. They're really concerned about how to say something versus what they say. So then I'm going to be very careful if I'm going to give you some feedback, if I'm going to provide you with something that I may disagree with you. And then people don't like to say no in many cultures. So then if you ask them, do you agree? What do you think? Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what does yes mean? What does yes mean? What does you? I heard you, yeah. Well, so let me ask you, what does yes mean in the United States? Okay, it means a lot of things. I agree, what else? I understand, and I'm gonna do it. It's a very affirmative, right? And uh, to us, yes is a yes. It's very clear, right? On the other hand though, for countries who tend to be more indirect, and they're really concerned about saving face, they, do not, they don't wanna say no if they disagree with you, or they think your idea is just a dumb idea. But they're not gonna say no to you, but instead, what are they gonna say that to send you a signal, but it's not directly using the word no? What have you heard? What have you heard? That it's really no, but they don't use the word no. They, they say something else. Yes? Ah, I'll think about it. <laughs> Forget it, right? <laughs> what else? What have you heard? That's really no, but it's, they don't use the word no. Yes. yes. They may say yes, but it just means I heard you. That's all. Yeah, that's all. It's like in English, you would say, aha, uh aha, -huh, aha. Uh -huh. What does aha mean? <laughs> <laughs> it means absolutely nothing, right? Yeah, aha yeah, uh -huh means nothing. So then don't get too excited when you hear this word yes. Right? Now, here's a very common thing that I heard a lot from my global clients, that especially when it comes to they work with uh, people from China or um, um, uh, from, from Japan and Korea and uh, also um, Singapore, they can be very, very subtle. But then very common response, if they don't want to do it or they disagree, they'll say, I will try my best. Have you heard of, I will try my best? Yes? yes? Yeah? <laughs> Okay, so in the US, if you hear somebody say, I'll try my best, what percentage do you think they're actually going to do it? What percent? Give me a number. 75. 75. Yeah, what else? 50, okay, yeah. Average, I heard it's about 75, 80%. Because if you're gonna do your best, what else can I ask for? That's great, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I expect something is gonna happen, but then, when I go to Asia and I ask people, when you say I'll try my best, what percentage are you actually gonna do it? What is the number? Yeah, much higher. Yeah, much higher? Oh, you're being too optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> so typically, I heard the number is anywhere between zero to 10%. Zero to 10%, right? And then so it's not like they try to trick you it's not like they're trying to lie or they have some ill intention to, to get you in trouble. None of that, right? So there is a reason they say that. First of all, in, in Asian culture, typically they have this expression, I will try my best. And this is a literal translation, especially in the Chinese language, which means it's a dead horse. <laughs> I'm gonna try to revive it, but don't hold your breath, all right? And that's a literal translation. But then if they translate that into English, it sounds really good. <laughs> so then we both think we're speaking English, but then we actually have a very different expectations about the result and the outcome, right? So um, yes versus no is definitely tricky. And that's why asking yes or no questions when you're communicating with your coworkers, communicating with um, your clients, over the phone or in the meetings, it's, it's very dangerous, okay? When you ask yes or no, and then they will answer yes, and then it will actually lead, that, lead you down in the wrong path. So, what kind of question do you think you should be asking instead of yes or no questions? Open-ended questions, right? Open-ended question, what does that sound like? 
what do you think of this? What do you think of this, right? So the open-ended question usually start with the W words. So it's what do you think, what is the plan, and what else? What other W words? Why? When can, when can we receive this report? And um, what is your thought behind this? And how are we going to proceed? Who will be involved? So all the W words that it's more open-ended questions. And you can get a lot more information from, the, uh, from your, your coworkers uh, rather than simply asking yes or no. Okay, so this is something that I think we, we have to be more aware, especially when we're speaking on the phone, we're always in a rush because we are, have time limits. But sometimes when we push too hard, we ask a lot of yes or no questions, and they give you the answer they wanted, you wanted to hear to get you off their back, <laughs> but you're not going to get the result that you're looking for. You may end up wasting more time. So it is important to be patient and asking more W questions.